Section 8.4 Algebraically Defined Vectors in the Dot Product First thing we're going to talk about in this section is something called a position vector. A position vector is a vector with initial point at the origin in a rectangular coordinate system. So if you remember in the last section, what we did was we looked at vectors, but they were not placed in any kind of coordinate system. Okay, I just gave you a grid that didn't have like an X axis or a Y axis. It just had the grid and we would put a point down for the initial point and then draw to the terminal point. Okay, so now if you have a position vector, you are placing your vector in a rectangular coordinate system. And on top of that, the initial point has to be in at the origin. So as far as notation goes, a position vector u with endpoint at the point a, b is written with this notation. So you're going from, if your terminal point is at a, b, at that point in the rectangular coordinate system, you're going to express the vector like this. So you're going to keep the a and the b, but the parentheses that you use for the ordered pair is going to turn into these endpoints that look like, I don't know, angles, okay? So that indicates that you have a position vector. So you know, if you see this notation, you've got a vector with an initial point at the origin, zero, zero, and then the terminal point has to be at the point a b okay so make sure you understand the difference between this and this and when you should be using parentheses that's just for a point and when you should be using the vector notation that is for a position vector okay so if we have such a vector u we can write it like this the vector u is equal to a b and we put the angle looking notation on it okay this means that every vector in the real plane corresponds to an ordered pair of real numbers geometrically okay because remember in the last section we looked at vectors from a geometric perspective now we're looking at them at an algebraic perspective geometrically a vector is a directed line segment algebraically it is an ordered pair okay so let me give you an example here and start drawing. Um, I've got the rectangular coordinate system here because I have an X and Y axis on top of this grid, okay? So I am gonna draw what the vector U, which is AB, okay, what it is going to look like. Okay, so I'm just gonna pick a random point. So maybe right here, okay? So say this point is AB. Okay, meaning the X coordinate is A and the Y coordinate is B. Okay, so what this vector would look like, and I'm going to draw it in red, its initial point would be at the origin and its terminal point would be at this point AB. Okay, so we have to draw the arrow. The arrow is always drawn from the initial point to the terminal point. Okay, so this is what this particular vector would look like. Okay, so... If you're dealing with a position vector, we can talk about the horizontal component and the vertical component of the vector. So if we read there, it says the numbers A and B are the horizontal component and the vertical component respectively of the vector U. Okay, so if I go back to this drawing, okay, and again, I'm using a very generalized point here. I don't have anything specific. This is just some random point AB. Okay, you can break this vector up into its horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so basically, if you look at this distance right here, okay, uh, so basically, you want to think about it this way. If I start, think of you, think of yourself walking in the plane. If you start walking from the initial point and you're walking towards the terminal point, you would have to go from this point, you would have to go. Uh, one, two, three, four units in the positive x direction, okay? So horizontally, 
you would have to go positive four units, okay? So this distance is the horizontal component. And that's actually equal to the A value, okay? Because remember, this point, this, this terminal point is AB, okay? So that means we're located at the point or the unit A on the X axis, okay? So if you started walking, you would have to walk A units in the positive X direction, and then you would have to go up B units, okay? So this distance right here is going to be the vertical component. Okay, so you would have to go up a distance of B units. Okay, that's how far you would have to walk vertically. So the vertical component here would be B. Okay, so that's what it means when you break a vector down into its horizontal and vertical components. Okay, if you're dealing with a position vector and the terminal point is at the point AB, A is the horizontal component and B is the vertical component. Okay. There is also something called the direction angle associated with a position vector. If you read right here, it says the direction angle theta for the vector u, which, is, which has components a and b, is the positive angle between the x-axis and u, okay? So make sure your angle's not always gonna, your vector's not always gonna be in the first quadrant. Make sure you understand how this direction angle is defined. It is the positive angle between the x axis and the vector u. It has to be a positive angle, okay? So if I come back up here, let me get a different color. If I wanted to draw the uh, direction angle here, it is going to be a positive angle, so that means I have to rotate uh, counterclockwise and again stare at the definition it's the positive angle between the x-axis and u the vector okay so basically um, if you were drawing an angle in standard position here okay this would be the term or sorry this would be the initial side and then the you would rotate counterclockwise to the terminal side okay so that's how you know you could think of the direction angle okay I'm not going to keep this side on here, but I'm just going to mark off the angle. But the direction angle would be this angle, okay? And I am going to put an arrow on here because I'm rotating from the positive x-axis to the vector, okay? So this is going to be theta, the direction angle. So I'll put direction angle theta, okay? You can see that this is a positive angle because it is assumed that the initial side of this angle coincides with the positive x-axis, and then we rotate in the positive direction, so counterclockwise, until we get to the vector, okay? So you will hear these terms with position vectors. Uh, you need to know them, horizontal component, vertical component, direction angle. All right. One, a couple of more things. Um, so we talked about in the last section the magnitude of a vector. The magnitude of a vector is basically the length of the vector, okay? Um, so it is just a number, okay? Um, and vectors have magnitude and direction. So we, you know, the direction is going to be given by this direction angle. Um, and magnitude, when we talked about it, like I said, we just said it was length. We didn't really talk about a formula for magnitude, but now we will. Okay, so let's come up here and look at this picture for this generic vector. Okay, so when we look at this, if you notice, what I have drawn here is a right triangle. Okay, so right here is the right angle. Okay, so when we look at this, I am focused on this direction angle theta. Relative to theta, if I go across here, this is the opposite side and this is a distance of B units. And also relative to theta, this side right here along the X axis, this distance A, that is gonna be the adjacent side. Okay, and again, it has a distance, it is a distance of A units, okay? Across from the right angle, we have the hypotenuse, okay? So the hypotenuse, the length of this red arrow, that's actually the magnitude of the vector, okay? So this is actually the magnitude of U, okay? So notice how I wrote that with the, 
it looks like absolute value symbols okay but that means magnitude of the vector okay so if we come out here and we if we look at this again we know relative to theta we know the opposite side and we know the adjacent side because those are the components of the vector so we can say that the tangent of theta is equal to the uh, b value the opposite side over the adjacent side okay so we can make this right triangle ratio okay and this is going to allow us to solve for theta if i want theta it is trapped by the tangent so i have to take the tangent inverse of both sides so this is going to tell me that if i want the direction angle theta here that it's going to simply be theta is the tangent inverse of the of b over a so the vertical component over the horizontal component okay so if you come down here to the box okay here's the formula for the direction angle it satisfies this equation the tangent of theta has to equal to b over a um, of course a can't be zero because you can't divide by zero okay but that's what we just discussed this is how you can come up with the direction angle the other thing in the box like i mentioned is a formula for the magnitude okay we know that we are dealing with a right triangle the hypotenuse is the magnitude of the vector okay so since this is a right triangle all we have to do is apply the pythagorean theorem okay so let me find a place to do this and get a different color here so if we use the pythagorean theorem here this is going to tell us let's see pythagorean theorem That tells us that the hypotenuse squared is equal to the adjacent side squared plus the opposite side squared. If we are looking for the uh, magnitude, remember the magnitude is the, uh, the, the length of the hypotenuse. So we can say that the magnitude of this vector u squared has to equal the adjacent component squared plus the opposite side, which is the vertical component squared okay so that is what we come up with and then if we simply just want the magnitude in, instead of the magnitude squared we just take the square root of both sides okay you don't have to put the plus or minus out front because again you're solving for the length of the vector which should be positive okay so this formula right here uh, the square root of a squared plus b squared that is going to give you the magnitude of your vector and again a is the horizontal component and b is the vertical component okay if we go down here we can just quickly read through this this is exactly what we just observed in the picture so for the magnitude and direction angle of a vector vector with components a b the magnitude or length of this vector is given by the following remember the notation if you have vector u it looks like it's an absolute value symbols but that's indicating the length or magnitude of the vector so you just need to take the square root of the following quantity you need to take a squared plus b squared okay a is the horizontal component of your vector b is the vertical component Okay, and then also we saw from that picture that I drew that if you want to find the direction angle theta, it satisfies the equation that tangent of theta is equal to B over A. Okay, so again, if you wanted to solve for theta here, theta is the tangent inverse of B over A. Okay, and again, A cannot be zero because then you would divide by zero. So let's jump to example one on the next page so we can try this out, okay, as far as finding the magnitude and direction angle of a vector. So if you read example one, it says find the magnitude and direction angle for the vector u that has components negative four and negative seven. Round angle measures to the nearest tenth as necessary, okay? All right, so here we go. Um, this, as soon as you see this notation, okay, with the endpoints that look like angles, um, this is indicating that you're dealing with a position vector. So the way this vector is going to work, the initial point is going to be at the origin, and then the terminal point is going to be at negative four, negative seven. 
so I just have a blank grid here but if you can space things any way you want uh, it should fit if I go by one so this will be negative one negative two negative three negative four so that's the horizontal component and then the vertical co component is negative seven so negative one negative two negative three negative four negative five negative six negative seven okay so if you go right here to this point this is negative four, negative seven. Okay, this is what it is as an ordered pair. If I'm trying to draw the vector, I need to draw from the initial point to the terminal point. Okay, so this is what this position vector looks like if you draw it out. Okay, so we have a couple of things to do here. We first need to find the magnitude or the length of this vector, and we also need to get the direction angle. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is find the magnitude. Okay, so the magnitude of vector u, that is going to be the square root of a squared plus b squared. If you follow the formula, this is what you need to use. Okay, but again, you can also see this from a right triangle. Okay, if you turn this thing into a right triangle, you know that this distance is seven units. Okay, and this distance is four units. Okay, if you're taking direction into account, that's fine. Uh, this is negative four in the x direction. This is negative seven in the y direction. Okay, um, so negative four is your horizontal component and negative seven is your vertical component. Okay, so that's your a and your b. Okay, you would plug these guys in. It's like the Pythagorean theorem here. Okay, so you're basically taking the square root of the horizontal component squared plus the vertical component squared okay so if we simplify this this is going to be the square root of 16 plus 49 and if we go to our calculator 16 plus 49 is going to give us 65 so i am just going to leave this as an exact answer the magnitude or the length of this vector is the square root of 65. Okay, now we need to get the direction angle. Okay, so I'm going to first draw it on here. Okay, so we know which angle we're looking for. Okay, so remember the definition. Okay, look at what's highlighted in blue here. It is the positive angle between the x-axis and your vector. Okay, so I have to start rotating at the positive x-axis and I need to go in the counterclockwise direction until I get to the vector. Okay, so the angle in orange is my direction angle. Okay, so remember what happens here. Okay, when we look at this, okay, if you go back to your, your uh, instructions here, the direction angle satisfies this equation that the tangent of theta is equal to b over a okay so let's deal with that so for the direction angle we know that the tangent of theta has to equal the b it has to equal b over a okay so b is the vertical component that's negative seven over a which is the horizontal component okay so this is what we're setting up based on the formula that you see okay so when you look at your picture theta is over 180 degrees okay what you can do if you focus on this yellow right triangle if we look at this particular angle that I'm putting in green it serves as a reference angle for theta okay if you're looking at this green angle and I'll call it alpha the tangent of alpha is equal to the opposite side, which is negative seven, over the adjacent side, which is negative four. Okay, so that's what we're really getting from the formula. Okay, so actually that's what I'm gonna say here. I'm gonna change this, okay? This is how we get theta, okay? But we're having to, if you're looking at the picture, we're really using this angle right here, which is alpha, not theta, because theta is definitely over 180 degrees, whereas alpha is an acute angle, okay? So if we go to our calculator, we can punch this in, 
okay make sure you're in degree mode because we're trying to get an angle out if you do the tangent inverse of negative 7 over negative 4 this is what you're gonna get okay so this definitely is not theta theta as we've drawn it has to be over 180 degrees okay this is the alpha angle the reference angle okay so I'm gonna go ahead and jot this down okay so this means that alpha is 60.255117 okay so we are told in the directions to round to the nearest tenth for the angle okay so we can go ahead and say alpha is approximately 60.3 degrees so in order to get theta now okay uh, we found this sliver of the angle highlighted right here you can see where my cursor is I'm highlighted it in purple that's alpha so I need to add the top portion up here which is 180 degrees so theta is going to be 180 degrees plus 60.3 degrees okay and this is again sorry it's an approximation for theta okay because we had to round okay so if we add 180 degrees to this this is the correct this is the correct direction angle okay so we're going to say 240.3 okay 240.3 degrees if you had answered uh, the 60.3 degrees that is incorrect okay because that would be a vector in quadrant one okay you had to add the 180 degrees to get you in the third quadrant